Is guys, this is a question that I asked the chat. Very important, okay, today. Yo, chat. Is civilization on the brink of collapse? Can we recover? I wonder. At its height, the Roman Empire was home to about uh, 30 percent so. of the world's population, and in many ways, it was the pinnacle Hi, of Shatter human Dex. advancement. I love you its guys. citizens enjoyed the benefits of central heating, concrete, things. double glazing, banking, international trade, and upward social mobility. Rome became the first city in history with one million inhabitants and was a center of technological, legal, and economic Pet progress. Things. An empire impossible to topple, stable and rich and powerful. Until it wasn't anymore. First slowly, then suddenly, the most powerful civilization on earth collapsed. By civilization, we mean a complex society where labor is specialized and social classes emerge and which is ruled by institutions. Civilizations share a dominant mutual language and culture and domesticate plants and animals to feed and sustain large cities where they often construct impressive monuments. How can I show you a civilization lets us become efficient on see. large scales, collect vast amounts of knowledge and put human ingenuity and the natural resources of the world to work. Without civilization, most people would never have been born. Which makes it a bit concerning that collapse is the rule, not the exception. Virtually all civilizations end, on average, after 340 years. 32 months, can I get a welcome to the jungle? Oh my no. god. Pogchim. I ordered 10 bits Hi, and a soup. My name is I ordered 10 bits and a soup! And what do I get? Three donuts and no soup! What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Man, I don't even know. I'm about to fucking lose my shit. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You wanna know why I'm, why I'm in a bad mood? That's why I'm in a fucking bad fucking mood. That's why I'm in a bad mood. No soup, no timbits, and I get this. Oh my fucking god, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my, it's an old, it's an old, oh my god. It's an old maple syrup donut. Oh. Uh, it's stale! Look! Look! It's not, this is not fluffy. Look, 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 it's stale. See what Look. I'm I'm done, dude. This is this is this is Lena Sparka. Donuts aren't supposed to do this. If a, if a donut is fresh and fluffy, when you eat it, it they expand, they re-expand because they're fluffy. This is a stale. Look, that's a bagel. And why do I always get scammed? Why do I always get scammed? I don't know what the fuck the thing is. All right, let's watch this. What are you saying? has become efficient on large scales, collect vast amounts of knowledge, and put human ingenuity and the natural resources of the world to work. Without civilization, most people would never have been born. Which True. makes it a bit concerning that collapse is the rule, not the exception. Virtually all civilizations end, on average, after 340 years. Collapse is rarely nice for individuals. Their shared cultural identity is shattered as institutions lose the power to organize people. Knowledge is lost, living standards fall, Jesus. violence increases, and often the population declines. The civilization either completely disappears, is absorbed by stronger neighbors, or something new emerges, sometimes with more primitive technology than before. If this is how it's been over the ages, what about us today? Just as Europeans forgot how to build indoor plumbing and make cement, will we lose our industrial technology? And with that, our greatest achievements from $1 pizza to smartphones or laser eye surgery, will all this go away too? Today, our cities stretch for thousands of square kilometers. We travel the skies. Our communication is instant. Industrial agriculture with engineered high-yield plants Efficient machinery and high-potency fertilizer feeds billions of people. 
modern medicine gives us the longest lifespan we've ever had, while industrial technology gives us an unprecedented level of comfort and abundance, even though we haven't yet learned to attain them without destroying our ecosphere. There are arguably still different civilizations around today that compete and coexist with each other, but together they also form a singular global civilization. But this modern globalized civilization is even more vulnerable in some ways than past empires because we are much more deeply interconnected. A yeah. collapse of the industrialized world literally means that the majority of people alive today would perish since without industrial agriculture we would no longer be able to feed them. And there's an even greater risk. What if a collapse was so deeply destructive that we were unable to re-industrialize again? What if it ruined our chances of enjoying a flourishing future as a multi-planetary species? A global civilizational collapse could be yeah, an existential... Yeah, yeah, that won't be a doomer trap, but I can't help but feel that <clears throat> even if we had a major collapse, you know when, when people say um, human nature is like a, uh, we don't do shit until shit happens? I feel like even if things did happen, like the worst of it, and it would... We would still want to learn and we'd just do it again. Literally, we just say, okay, Something let's do it again. Not just the lives and, and that's of it. everyone alive how we today, are. but all the future generations that could have come into being. All the knowledge we might have discovered, the art we might have created, the joys we might have experienced would be lost. So, how likely is all of this? Let's start with some good news. While civilization collapses have happened regularly, none have ever derailed the course of global civilization. Rome collapsed, but the Aksumite Empire, or the Teotihuacans, and of course the Byzantine Empire, carried on. What about sudden population crashes? So far, we've not seen a catastrophe that has killed much more than 10% of the global population. Well, but no we're all, pandemic, we're all, we're all, we're all in our these days, though. No war. The last clear example of a rapid global population decrease was the Black Death, a pandemic of the bubonic plague in the 14th century that spread across the Middle East and Europe and killed a third of all Europeans and about one-tenth of That's the global insane. population. If any event was going to cause the collapse of civilization... At the time they, they were wearing these masks because they thought that um, they were putting a bunch of spices and herbs in, in front of the masks and they were called doctors or plague doctors or whatever the fuck. And they thought that all the herbs were like cleansing and they thought it, it, it was helping, but they were all dying like everybody else. That should have been it. But even the Black Death demonstrates humanity's resilience more than its fragility. While the old societies were massively disrupted in the short term, the intense loss of human lives and suffering did little to negatively impact European economic and technological development in the long run. Population size recovered within two centuries, and just two centuries later, the Industrial Revolution mm. began. History is full of incredible recoveries from horrible tragedies. Take the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during World War II. 140,000 people were killed and 90% of the city was at least partially incinerated or reduced to rubble. But against That's all odds, insane. they made a remarkable recovery. Hiroshima's population recovered within a decade and today it's a thriving city of 1.2 million people. None of this made these horrible events any less horrible for those who lived through them. But for us as a species, these signs of resilience are good news. Why recovery is likely even in the worst case. One thing that's different from historic collapses is that humanity now has unprecedented destructive power. Today's nuclear arsenals are so powerful that all-out global war could cause a nuclear winter and billions of deaths. Our knowledge of our own biology and how to manipulate Chat. it is getting so advanced. Chat. What's nuclear winter, Chad? Is it, is it when the ashes rise and it does a bit like uh, like dinosaurs? Like it, it makes a layer above and it's like we're not in, in our own like, okay, yeah. That's that it's the becoming possible to engineer viruses as contagious as the coronavirus and as deadly yeah, as yeah, Ebola. Increasingly, the risk of global pandemics is much higher than in the past. So we may cause a collapse ourselves and it might be much worse than the things nature has thrown at us so far. But if, say, 99% of the population died, would global civilization collapse forever? Could we recover from such a tragedy? We have some reasons to be optimistic. Let's start with food. There are 1 billion agricultural workers today, so even if the global population fell to just oh, wow, 80 million, really? it's virtually guaranteed that many survivors would know how to produce food. 
and we don't need to start at square one because we could still use modern high yield crops. That's a lot. Maize is 10 times bigger than its wild ancestor. Ancient tomatoes were the size of today's peas. After agriculture, the next step towards recovery would be rebuilding industrial capacity like power grids and automated manufacturing. A huge problem is that our economies of scale make it impossible to just pick up where we left off. Many of our high-tech industries are only functional because of huge demand and intensely interconnected supply chains across different continents. Even if our infrastructure were left unharmed, we would make huge steps back. How is that propaganda? This is, these are all hypotheticals. Quotes technologically. But then again, we are thinking in larger time frames. Industrialization originally happened 12,000 years after the agricultural revolution. So if we need to start over after a massive collapse, it shouldn't be that hard to reindustrialize, at least on evolutionary timescales. There's a hitch though. The Industrial Revolution ja, was fueled... Ja, ja, isn't it hard to, 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 for fuel to slow down on some parts as everybody, right? And if, if technically, if one person slows down, that's the opportunity for somebody else to speed up, right? And, then, and it's like it's so competitive that somebody else will take over and it becomes, like, it becomes weird as fuck. Well. by burning easily accessible coal, and we are still very much reliant on it. I mean, it's if weird we use it all up today, aside from making rapid climate change much worse, we could hinder our ability to recover from a huge crisis. So we should stop using easy to access coal so it can serve as a civilization insurance in case something bad happens. Another thing that makes recovery likely is that we'd probably have most of the information we need to rebuild civilization. We would certainly lose a lot of crucial institutional knowledge, especially on hard drives that nobody could read or operate anymore. But a lot of the technological, scientific and cultural knowledge stored in the world's 2.6 million libraries would survive the catastrophe. The post-collapse survivors would know what used to be possible and they could reverse engineer some of the tools and machines they'd find. In conclusion, despite the bleak prospect of catastrophic threats, natural or created by ourselves, there is reason for optimism. Humankind is remarkably resilient and even in the case of a global civilizational collapse, it seems likely that we would be able to recover, even if many people were to perish or suffer immense hardship. Real. Even if we lost cultural and technological achievements in the process. But given the stakes, the risks are still unnervingly high. True. Nuclear war and like Chad, dangerous but pandemics the dumb threaten friend. the amazing global civilization we have built. Humanity is like a teenager, speeding around blind corners, drunk without a seatbelt. The good news is that it's still early enough to prepare for and to mitigate these risks. We just need to actually do it. We made this video together with Will this McCaskill, you. a professor. Yeah, no shit, guys. Guys, I'm a little, a virtual monkey in pixels broadcasting waves to morons, okay? You could be doing homework, making money, taking care of your fucking pets. Yeah, you're watching monkey in a cage, man. You're watching monkey in a cage. Dude, it is dumb, man. For a philosophy at Oxford and Jesus. one of the founders of the effective altruism movement which is about w. doing the most good you can with your time and money. Will just published a new book called What We Owe the Future, which is about how you can positively impact the long-term future of our world. If you like Kurzgesagt videos, the chances are high you'll like it. The book has some pretty counterintuitive ideas. That was nice. I, I like enjoyed it. Risks. I enjoyed the video. Guys, like I always say, guys, guys, I always have a, a special place in my heart for this channel. They have a really, a bunch of good, good, really, really good videos. Because I, I may sound like a dick writer, but they have really, really good videos. Hey, yeah, I, I don't know why, okay? Uh, sometimes when I'm alone, I, I'll rewatch some, some of these, some of these, some of these. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll watch a bunch of them.